Uh, let's move on to our second segment, which is about a post uh, from Dan, the man, about changing the world, okay, in which uh, Dan uh, kind of goes off on a uh, very philosophical um, thread, you know, should we give up comforts? For example, quote, I'm quoting, should we give up comforts? And uh, notice I'm not quoting in any kind of insulting voice, so. <laughs> Should we give up comforts of today uh, in pursuit of an elusive utopia that we hope to bring about? Um, and then he talks about um, how, you know, trying to change uh, the economic reality or the political re reality is just is resistance. And, you know, he quotes Eckhart Tolle, who's a favorite uh, author of mine, the author of The Power of Now, a real uh, huge proponent of meditation and the whole Zen Buddhism thing, Bas to basically say, you know, you shouldn't resist, um, you know, injustice and uh, violence and these things. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you guys think about that? Renee, you want to you wanna go ahead? Go first. Sure. Well, this is a topic near and dear to my heart, so I could probably talk the entire podcast about it. I will try to keep my 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 opinions short and sweet. I just like you. Oh, short and sweet. No, I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'm like six two. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's you're, you're sexist, like Stephen. Yeah, like that's sexist. Like not all sexism. Not, not all girls are small, and not all Vikings have beards. <laughs> Um, no, but so on the surface, I really appreciated Dan sharing his um, uh, philosophical side. And um, on the surface, I kind of agreed with it. But once I started to look critically at um, uh, the argument, it really didn't drive with my personal philosophy. Um, I don't think that the free market is the solution for suffering in the world. I don't think that um, the, the things that Dan said were the source of suffering in the world are actually the source of suffering. He said that, that um, when we label things bad, that that creates some kind of emotional contradiction and that suffering springs from that. And I'm like, no, labels are great. We just have to use them wisely. Um, so for me, resistance is key. I kind of go with the whole Camus philosophy of rebellion. And resistance is how we define ourselves. So I don't think that that's a, a bad thing. And I think that's how we'll change the world. Not, not through focusing on now and meditating. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Steven, what do you think? I'm, uh, I am actually somewhere in between you guys. Um, I am... Um, I have my own values and I weigh my own values actively. And I definitely consider um, a peaceful interaction with people to be preferable. And I know how to command that in my own life, but I don't, I know, I, you know, not everybody's got that. Um, I, I would hope that some people do, but those who do also have that same opinion that they can um, also have the whole world be peaceful and, and lovey dovey and moving towards uh, abundance. And you know what, just some people at the moment don't want that. And so uh, there's this uh, combination where I definitely think you have to define and resist thing. Like there's some people who've just been brainwashed towards destruction. You're not, no matter how peaceful your actions are, they're going to find a way to have a problem with you. And they may be the types of people who take up violence against you, um, you know, kind of like how children have a problem and jealousy of their neighbor's toy. You know, the neighbor kid's toy. I mean, adults do that too. Um, but I think with the age of information and that human connection, we've kind of started to move away from that. But not everybody has. Not everybody's using the internet the same way we are. And so they still have that older mentality. And so I'm somewhere in between. I, I would love to see Dan's world. Hot damn. I would love to see money disappear. I would love to well, – he doesn't say that. Um, but, he, you know, I would love to see um, – some people not focus on profits, but you know, people are selfish. We are conditioned to be very selfish, especially in Western civilization. So, you know, some people are just going to focus on the profits. Uh, people like yourself, Dan, are going to be um, 
focusing on something bigger and greater. And lo and behold, that's just the philosophy of billionaires, bud. Um, so that's what that's what successful people of great influence have focused on something building something greater than themselves. But uh, the average man is not a billionaire, doesn't have a billionaire mindset, and is going to be very very selfish in their focus of the world. You know, there, there's a quote uh, from Alan Watts, who's a really fascinating- I love Alan quote. Watts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, As muddy water is best cleared by leaving it alone, it could be argued that those who sit quietly and do nothing are making one of the best po- possible contributions to a world in turmoil. And I, I have a lot of respect for that position. I think there's a lot of, a lot of uh, wisdom in it. But at the same time, I think Dan's post has uh, like a false dichotomy. You know, it's in his post kind of reminds me of people like uh, Adam Kokesh were like, mm. uh, you're either you're either like out there building muscles and, you know, defeating the state or you're a couch potato and you're doing nothing. You know, like that's another false dichotomy. Dan's is like, mm. you're either out there with Eckhart Tolle meditating or you're resisting. You know, resisting is bad. Well, no, there's another way. Uh, Buckminster Fuller, Fuller, not Fuller, (laughs) Fuller said something to the effect of uh, the best way to uh, overcome the status quo is to just grow beyond it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's what Dan is actually uh, doing in most part is that he's building a new paradigm. And is that part that, you know, building something new, building your way out of, uh, you know, the situation we have now, I, I don't think that necessarily has to be resistance. And it's definitely not the kind of passivity, uh, the extreme passivity that, uh, you know, Eckhart Tolle and others uh, preach. Right. Um, I think that, oh, what's going on with my screen? Okay. I think that is, uh, I think the approach is something that's very, very um, objectivist in practice. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a certain there's a certain maturity that is required to come to the terms of I recognize what's wrong with the world. I can either accept the way that's how things are or I can build something that is better. And uh, that's that was the that's the objectivist solution and that's what Dan does. He's um yeah, he's just building that alternative solution, and yeah, he has his you know more Zen philosophy or you know uh, way of living, but he's uh, he's not being passive. You know, there's you can't he, he can't argue that he's being passive when he's actually building something that people are interacting with and basing their lives around at this point. Uh, you're, you're sorry, bud. Uh, you may be Zen minded, but your body's saying interact with the world and build something big. Hmm. That's, that's kind of how I see it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, there was a, there was a follow-up article too, a response by at, Sensei TK that I I thought was a little bit interesting, but it was a bit more conspiratorial minded. Like he says, uh, he wants to have a future society with globalized democracy, you know, that to like a libertarian anarchist, that's like, you know, globalized democracy. Oh my God. I've resisted resisted a certain group of shadow puppeteers with the simplest (laughs) weapon of all wisdom, you know, and that, that, that's, I, I don't know. That's, uh, anytime some, some like uh, there's a commenter, uh, I think it was Steam Uwe, who posted uh, in response to some content I put up on my own channel last week. He said, well, the president's not really in charge, you know, and I, I respect Steam Uwe. I think he has some interesting things to say, but, you know, like this whole thing, like, well, the president's not really in charge. I mean, and, uh, you know, we we created ISIS and things. I don't know the the whole conspiracy thing. It doesn't it just doesn't compute for me. Uh, I guess I guess my 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 background intelligence analyst background makes all of it compute for me. <laughs> um, so you know, as soon as I got out of the military, I jumped on board with all of the shit that I was aware of, 
And I was like, okay, what's going on in the regular open source internet? And what do, you know, and I'm just looking for the keywords and I am of the exact same opinion. So I'm, you know, I'm on that other end. I definitely believe in, not even just believe, I've seen evidence of, coll- of collusion and conspiracy. Um, it's, oh, I'm sure there are conspiracies, definitely, undoubtedly. But, uh, but you know, in a, uh, exchanging information between intelligence agencies and stuff like that, um, there's entire jobs in the military uh, where they're, they're, they're meant to carry out false flags in local populations for our own people to respond to um, and create you know, chaos uh, amidst order just to further justify uh, their, uh, what's the word, their invasion or whatever, or their occupation is the word. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm on that side of global conspiracy. Um, I don't necessarily think everybody's on the same page, even those involved in the small part of the conspiracy. Uh, you know, somebody's a puppet to somebody else. In my experience, there's a there's a very complicated web of influence, and it it doesn't always come to somebody at the top. There are some people who have their own ideas they're trying to push while being part of somebody else's ideas because they recognize that's just the best way for them to have influence. You got to cooperate. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I know there's all kinds of shady stuff going on. I just, uh, I'm really, I, I, I'm not under no illusions. I mean, I was, uh, six years ago, I was framed by U.S. Marshals, straight out framed. Fucking A. I mean, it's, I don't doubt there's all kinds <laughs> of stuff going on. But, yeah, I am skeptical. Of some, You know, like somebody says, well, the president's really in charge, dude. I mean, you know, what are you in fourth grade? Don't you know that? You know, <laughs> kind, of, kind of skeptical about that. Yeah, I guess. But anyway, let's jump to our next topic, uh, which is why aren't the whales voting? 